<laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, we're back. Hi. Hi again. It's 5.08. It's Tuesday. It's actually a nice, cool, but sunny day here. I'm on Long Island with Adriana. Can you say hi? I know you don't like the way you look today, but you look cute. Hi. That's Adriana, <laughs> who's helping me. Hold on. Is this Laura here? Oh. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. I think we got it, everybody. Fingers crossed that Laura is going to be joining us momentarily. Oh. Yay! Oh my God. <laughs> hi! <laughs> I was I'm having so a heart happy. attack. <laughs> First of all, I love your glasses. Well, thank you. Thank oh, my you. God. I'm at that age now, you know. Oh, believe me. Honestly, I can't see a damn thing without no, my glasses. Blind as a bat. Blind as but, a bat. But I love yours. They're so big. They're very they are. chic. They're a little Edith head. I, I know. know. I, <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. So anyway, everybody's so excited that you're here. I have the nicest followers. And Laura... I haven't talked to you in so long. It's been a long time, a very I, long time. I can't and believe. Thank you for the baby blanket you sent for Bennett. Oh, you're welcome. You're I don't welcome. know if you ever got my thank you note, but in case you didn't, thank you. We oh, love it. You're welcome. I'm sure I did, but that was a while ago. I'm. That so was six happy. years ago. I'm so happy for you. So you have a lot. I mean, first of all, congratulations on all. Uh, your continued success. Well, thank um, you. Someone just asked how the money laundering is going. We're going to get yes. to Ozark and yeah. some other things in a moment, which is such a great show. My husband, John Molner, is over there on our exercise bike. But no, Molner, you have to come and say hi to Laura when you get a chance. He absolutely loves that show, as do oh, I. Good. But oh, he's good. ahead of me in terms of. Oh, John. John. Okay. Laura. This Hi, is John. John Mulder. I got Hi. married. I got I married know. how many years ago? Uh, uh, seven. Seven five. years ago. Five. I did a dance in my Six. living room for you. I did a dance of joy for you. For both Thank of you. you. Laura for and both I of you. To, I know. Don't you love those glasses? <laughs> Laura and I used to kind of sit in my office when I was at the Today Show. A couple of times she was on the show for one of her many incredible performances, and we would bitch about our love lives. Yeah, we had, a rough we had a rough time there for a while. It was we not pretty for either of us. I know, <laughs> but look, it all worked out. It all right? it does. It all works out. Uh, well, see? Yeah. And is, he's so great and so fun and funny, and um, and Good. he d gave himself a terrible hair haircut. I, I cut my hair myself. He I it know. looks terrible. There are there's so there are thousands of people with bad haircuts now <laughs> roaming around their homes thinking I, what what was I thinking? It's liberating. It's liberating. I think. Really? I, yeah, like, I was okay. tempted the other day. I had really? A moment. I had a you know, moment. I actually thought about doing the whole Britney Spears thing to my oh, hair, yeah. just like Buzz buzzing it. it off and just letting it go it. gray. Yeah. Your hair is looking darker than usual. It is darker. I did a play right before you we did a, all. I, I, I love Elizabeth Strout so much. She's wonderful. She's out. I did a play wrote, by her. Yeah. I know. I read about it in the New York Times. I was so excited to see it. And then it ended right before Broadway right shut before. down. That's right. So this is, um, and I didn't have time to have my hair restored to well, it's, its natural blonde a glory. I like you as a brunette because it <laughs> kind of matches the tortoise shell in your glasses. Laura. Oh, yes, yes. But I did me, it, and that's why. We have so much to catch up with. So I'm relieved. Oh, wait, do you want to ask Laura uh, any questions about I'm a Ozark? Big fan. I'm a big, big fan. And Katie's been having all these great conversations. And basically, I don't really have any interest in any of them. But I'm like, <laughs> well, you're talking to Laura Linney. I would like uh, to see them all. Thanks. You liked all my well, no, I like them all. But, this was, <laughs> but I thought this was a big one. The show's amazing. Thank you. I couldn't Thank stop you. watching it. And I loved your relationship with Jason uh, and how... Um, you know, it it was it was really it had a lot of Breaking Bad in it, but it's so original too. And your did you have that whole was that show sort of conceived for three seasons? That's sort of what I was wondering. Or did it just sort of? No, because we we have no idea if we'll be renewed at the end of every right. season. So there's always a hope that you will be. But I think our showrunner, whose name is Chris Mundy, is just. Did a great I can't job. say enough. I can't say enough good things about that man. Um, I think in his mind he has a clear arc. Yeah. Um, so whatever it season will be, three, whatever it will be. Every season was great. You, okay, you thank you. Thank you. Anyway, big, okay. big, big fan, fan and John. Yay. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank nice meeting you. So, so Laura, so you've got Ozark going, which is such mm -hmm. a, it, that must be a dream role. How much fun have you had doing that show and also working with Jason, who seems like 
the nicest, cutest, funniest, coolest guy. Yeah, he's all those things. He's what all was, those things. And what more. has it been like for you to do that show? Well, it you know, it's just been this big, unexpected privilege and pleasure, really. I mean, it's a lot of times you can do, you can step onto a television show and it doesn't go terribly well. And then it either fails miserably and you feel bad and ashamed that it didn't do well, or it's successful and then you're stuck with people you don't like. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that's the gamble when you, when you go into something like this. And in this situation, you know, it's the best of every of everything you could hope for. It's a spectacular group of people. I love my producers. I love working for Netflix and MRC. I love these actors. I love going to work every day. Our crew is exceptional. So I just really, and I realized very early on, I was like, oh, I fell into a pot of honey here. I really did. So, 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 Laura, do you, so you are, you don't know right now if in fact, you're going to be renewed and you're going to have a fourth season? I'm certainly hopeful of that. And yeah. there's every indication, given how well the show has been going, that that will happen or hopefully happen. But we don't know yet. Yeah. We well, don't officially I mean, it's, know. It's, it's hugely popular. So I can't imagine mm -hmm. it wouldn't. And uh, so you've got that But, going. you know, I, I never thought there'd be a pandemic either. So yeah, you never true. know. Well, and that, that reminds me, I mean, even if it is renewed, I guess shooting schedules are so up in the air right now. Have you gotten any guidance? And what are people who are on popular shows like Ozark, what are they doing? Well, I think everyone is just asking themselves questions at this point. No one has any answers. Nobody knows anything yet. I, I've heard through the grapevine, but it's only rumor that certain shows are going back to work. But I don't, who knows? You know, it's all rumor. It's not from anyone official and but then there are lots of questions about how do you keep a uh, a crew safe how do you keep actors healthy how do you if you're on location can you ever go home and visit your family how do crew members pass equipment back and forth to each other how do hair and makeup people get into your face and right and do you right. if someone gets sick then what happens there's so many questions that everyone is I think asking themselves and then there's then there are the, the, the business questions about how do you how do you insure a company? Can you insure a show anymore? What so people are just asking themselves questions like how do we all how do we all deal with this? And are you are you in touch with the people on the show? I would imagine sort of producers or kind a, of a little bit, but not really. I mean everyone is just sort of in shock, I think, still about the situation that we all find ourselves in. And all of us trying to figure out how do we how do we go back to work that's safe and responsible, um, and how do we make that happen so that so that we don't make matters worse. Yeah, I know that a lot has happened. I want to talk to you about the play and some other things you've been up to. But I'm so happy for you because I know a lot of really great things have happened to you in the last six years. And, mm -hmm. and when were mm -hmm. you, when did you get married, Laura? I remember when you got married. I think I yeah. talked to you, the last time I talked to you was, I think right before you were getting married. Yes, yes. It was, we got married 11 years ago. And it's been 11 and you years that someone has blown by. Who, who's not in the business. He's not in the business. He's a civilian. I married a regular person. <laughs> and, uh, you know, God bless him. He's, he's been really game about this crazy life I lead. And, and uh, he's been a spectacular father. And so I'm, I'm very, very lucky. And so you had a baby uh, six years ago, a baby I Bennett, which yeah. I love that name, by the way. Thank and I you. know, um, tell me how Bennett has changed your life. Oh, well, in every, every possible way. And the thing that was nice, you know, he was, it was not something I took for granted and really didn't think the opportunity for parenthood was going to be there for me really. And, um, but I, people kept saying, well, your life is going to change. Your life is going to change. Like it was some bad thing. And I was very ready for my life to change <laughs> very, very ready. So it's been nothing but a joy, you know, he's surprising and fun and funny and challenging and delicious and, and all of those things. So it's been, um, more, more than anything I could have hoped for. So I'm, I'm so, I'm I, I'm very, so, very lucky. 
I'm so thrilled for you, honestly, Laura. I'm just, <laughs> Thank you. Just, you're, you're so <laughs> deserving of happiness because you're truly, oh, kind. not only are you so gifted, you're one of the nicest people around. And I think oh, you've been Katie. so unaffected. No, honestly, I don't mean to be, be corny and weird, but you've been so wonderfully unaffected by your success. I don't feel like you've mm. ever gone Hollywood and you've just always been uh, well, I think part of it is because you're you're so intelligent. But you know, I know that you had very strict uh, requirements oh, oh, for. Hold, hold, hold on one second. Oh, child okay. in room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I see him or not? Can you watch something? What do you want to watch? Sorry, hold on. Can he say oh. hi to me, or is that not cool? Here's a hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, B, go ask Daddy. Okay, thank you. Oh, somebody <laughs> said my hoop bearing's about to fall out. Thank you very oh, much. Right. Thank God for comments. Oh, Laura means a civilian and that she didn't marry someone from Hollywood. But anyway, right. what I was going to say I is, didn't marry an actor. Yeah, yeah. so, so um, with Ozark, I know you, you really kind of balanced your, your role as a mom with your role in Ozark by making sure that you got home a certain amount of time and you wrote it into your contract, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was an unspoken, well, there was an unspoken agreement. I said before I accepted the job that I would have to have an additional day off a week and, and so that I could fly from, they were, they've been great. And it's an ensemble show. So it, the, um, the structure of it just sort of allows for that. Um, so I am home when he's in school and, you know, and our show shoots in Atlanta and I live in Brooklyn. Um, I'm gone two or three days a week and then I fly home and I'm there and, um, and it's worked out well. It's it's not ideal. I wish I was home all the time, but it's it's uh, it's necessary. And does Bennett ever come to the set with you? Is he able to travel? He does or occasionally. Not so much? Yes. Yeah. And last season we filmed during the summer, so he was there all summer long. Oh, summer so in Atlanta. I can't think of yeah. anything worse. I used to live in Atlanta, <laughs> and summer was so miserable. I remember getting into my unair conditioned Toyota Corolla oh, yeah. after putting mascara on it, basically melting oh, down yeah. my face. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I so. weirdly like it. You do? I do. I love the humidity. My, you know, my family is from Southern Georgia. So I have really Proustian feelings about the heat down there. Um, and I love it. I really where, like where, it. Where in Southern Georgia are, you, are they from? Uh, Baxley and Douglas and St. Simons and family all throughout the South. And I oh, have family in Atlanta now as well, which makes it additionally nice because when I go down there to film, there are cousins there. And so it's great. Because you grew up in New York City, I know. You had a single mom who raised you yep. and yep. worked full time. I just uh, asked you about uh, Southern Georgia because my dad um, was uh, from Dublin, Georgia. Oh, I and didn't he, know that. He, yeah. And he wrote for the Atlanta Constitution. And he you went got to Mercer. Yeah. You got oh, people yeah. down there. Yeah. people down there. He went to Mercer in Macon. Uh -huh. And yeah. so, um, and work for the Macon Telegraph. And my mom's family are all from, uh, she grew up in Omaha, but they're from Alabama, from Alex City, right. Alabama. So I have a lot of Southern roots. So yeah. I had no idea that you had so, so many Southern roots. Oh, I'm the first Yankee in the history of my family. Really? I'm the first person born above the Mason-Dixon line on both sides of my family that go back generations and generations and generations. Oh, so, so Georgia is, I, I love Georgia. And I, and it is also what makes Ozark that much more fun for me is I get to film down there. So I oh, really, that's fun. I love being there. Yeah. And get to see a lot of your relatives, I guess, at the same time, maybe a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Oh, that's it's so true. nice. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I imagine yeah. you must be really busy. Well, tell me just uh, quickly, Laura, about uh, the play that you did with, with, uh, that was based on Elizabeth Strout's novel. I loved uh, uh, Olive Kittredge. There's actually a follow-up yes. to Olive Kittredge. I think it's yes. called After Olive or Olive, something. Olive it's Again. Olive Again. It, have Olive you read Again. it? Yes. I, yes, I have read it. Her stuff is just wonderful. And Elizabeth Strout wrote these amazing books. And one book that she's written is called My Name is Lucy Barton, which is an interior monologue that a woman has as she's staying in a hospital uh, for a mysterious illness. And she wakes up and she finds her estranged mother sitting at the end of her bed. And the novel sort of unfolds from there. And you learn a lot about her and a lot about the mother and a lot about where Lucy Barton came from. And so this book was turned into a one woman show. And I was lucky enough to be the person who they handed it to. 
That's awesome. So I did it in I did it in London twice, and then it came to New York, and I I finished my run right before Broadway shut down. Would you ever t t uh, take it on the road and have it go to other cities or? Possibly, sure. Yeah, especially especially now, I think it's important for a lot of us to to travel and uh, take the arts out of Manhattan. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be more and more important as as we try and uh, you know get through all of this. Yeah, someone said that uh, Elizabeth lives down the road from them in Maine. So, yeah. you know, so yeah. many of obviously her her novels are based in Maine. Yeah. And I, as I said, I'm a huge fan of hers. Well, how are you doing uh, with this whole crazy period? How are you handling it? Um, what are you doing to stay busy? And how's Bennett doing with homeschooling? <laughs> no, are yeah, you getting yeah. along? Do you still love your husband? Yeah, What's going on? yeah. I have good days and bad days. You know, yeah. I have some days where I'm fine and other days where I'm not and I don't understand why I'm not fine. Uh, and then I have to stop and give myself a big break. Um, but homeschooling is really challenging. What I've learned is I am not a good kindergarten teacher. I'm not bad. Yeah. But I'm not. I, it's not the vocation I should have chosen. And I'm glad I, I didn't. <laughs> I'm glad that's not what I do because I'm not yeah. very good at it. Um, and And he's being such a good sport. And. Our school has been so spectacularly good about providing us a program to follow online and the teachers are on with them all the time and there's a lot to do and, and the whole community um, around his school has been quite wonderful. Um, but having said that, I'm his mother and he doesn't want to listen to me all the time. Yeah. So it's a challenge. It's one step forward, three steps back, um, keeping him focused, keeping him interested, keeping him, you know, engaged is is uh is a challenge and there's some days where i'm really good at it and then there's some days where i'm really really bad <laughs> well i think you need so. to be i think everyone needs to be gentle with themselves and know that yeah. you know this is new territory but i also love the fact that it really makes us i've always felt this way but that we all appreciate and understand how important it is the 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 important job teachers have Oh, and, good Lord. Right. And I, I feel uh, like uh, teachers uh, uh, are so undervalued and underpaid and under respected yes. in our culture. And, yes. and do you think maybe this will change? I hope so. I certainly hope so. You know, I've, I've, you know, I've always loved school and I've loved schooling and I've loved being a student. So I've always loved teachers and what they've done, but it certainly uh, is hard to ignore now for people who are not so aware of what a good education is and what teachers provide to students all the way from preschool through, through graduate study, you know, what they do, you know, through their hard work and their talents and their, you know, vocation for, for teaching. So it's, I think it's a very, very good thing that it's really in people's faces, like how important this segment of the population is. I couldn't agree with you more. Meanwhile, what is New York like? I'm out on Long Island and I know, I've been in the city. John has been in the city a lot. I, I went last weekend. Uh, do things seem to be, seem to be well, calming I'm not, down? I'm actually in Connecticut. Oh, you're in I'm Connecticut, in the, so you're not I'm in, in the, the city. Yeah. I'm not in the city. Um, but I, I went down uh, for a day, and it was eerie. It was extremely eerie. And I find it's really interesting that people, unless you're around the tri-state area, their view of this pandemic is very, very different. You know, it's, it, it, well, I talk to people in California and there's a lightness in their voice. And although I know they're going through it as well, the New York City people have been weathering it in a way that is, uh, I, I, I feel when I speak to other people is different. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's intense. But yeah. you go there and it's like a it's like a weird film. It's like a weird movie. There was no one on the streets when I was there. It was I expected a tumbleweed to come down. The, I know, isn't street. it strange? You can actually walk in the middle of the street or of the middle of Park Avenue in New York City yeah. and and be pretty safe about it. And spring has sort of happened. And yeah, usually you could enjoy the cherry blossoms around the reservoir yeah. and uh, all the tulips everywhere. But it's it's and it's been quiet. Such, yeah quiet except the for the sound of ambulances sadly that's so. right which sort of like pierced the whole thing and it's it's uh it's a it's a different experience 
Yeah. So um, are you working on anything right now? Are you, are you reading? Are you watching anything? Because we're always looking for good recommendations. You know, I have a bit of a cookbook issue. I have a cookbook problem. You do? Have you been so, cooking yeah. a lot? I have been more than, more than normal. I'm not a great cook, but I try. And, uh, but I have a cookbook problem. So I, you know, and all these, and the New York Times just issued some great list of like cookbooks that are worth your time during the pandemic. Click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 click. And they arrived in a box and I, you know, unwrapped them and I, I read them like novels. I sit and I sit in bed and sort of go through them and earmark them and all that and sort of stuff. What, so. what are some, what are some of your favorites? Somebody just asked. Oh, there's, um, Procrastibaking is a good one. <laughs> And uh, hold on a sec. What's the other one that I got? I got one. Always Home, Fanny Singer's new book. Uh -huh. Alice Waters' daughter, who wrote a memoir and cookbook, which is terrific. And then Keeping It Simple is a good one. And oh, From Oven to Table is great. <laughs> and uh, Emotional Eating. Where's that one? Oh, There's that one sounds like it was eating named from after Store, me. Which is great as well. I think everyone's emotionally yeah, eating right now, right? So are you oh, making- and then there's Brave Tart. Brave Tart is a great cookbook for baking and everything. Terrific. So. Oh, great. So, so are, you, are you actually making things? Yeah. I'm, I've been, uh, I made some hand pies. I made cherry hand pies, and then I made peach ones last night. Um, so the, the second batch was better than the first. <laughs> So you're having fun but I'm, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm trying. And are you, are you yeah, watching yeah. anything? Are you streaming anything? You know, I've been watching the ESPN uh, docuseries about Michael Jordan. Yeah. The Last Dance. I've been watching that. And, but to be honest with you, if I can stay awake, by the end of the day, homeschooling my child, I I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And I put him to bed and I normally, I I'm not long for the world after that. I'm, I'm pretty pooped. And are you finding time to exercise and to get outside? No, okay. no. I mean, a little bit. One would think, you know, I listen to these people who have all this time and I, and I, 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 I just think, oh, God, how nice. I kind of, is it nice? I mean, and I think, where is that, where is that time? And it's, uh, it just isn't, uh, it isn't available to me at the moment, but that's fine. And that's good oh. too, because it keeps me on a schedule. My daughter just came into the chat. So my daughter, Ellie, who lives oh. in Los Angeles, and Laura, she was going to get married in July, and we had to oh. postpone, or she had to postpone her wedding for a year. So um, she'll be getting married, hopefully, fingers crossed, the summer yes. of 2021. So, It'll be that much sweeter when it happens. Yeah, and she's, she's such a, a huge fan of yours as well. Is this so, the same daughter who dressed up as Holly Golightly for Halloween? No, that was Carrie. Carrie that was, was obsessed with um, Audrey Hepburn for a while. And we just watched a home video of her birthday party because she also went through a Marilyn Monroe stage. <laughs> and, and literally, she was about five years old. And a friend of mine from Great. Saturday Night Live <laughs> made her a cute little silk, you know, uh, what was it? Seven year it itch. Uh, is that what it's called? Seven year itch with, with the yes, pleats yes. and the white halter top. Yes. And she had this blonde wig and a beauty mark. And it was so oh, funny. She was absolutely obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. She was eight. She was eight. Sorry. Not five. Oh, she. I remember that she came to the Halloween party. Who, Laura? Oh, you came to a Halloween party, Carrie said, to the Shifty's Halloween party. I did. That's so funny. Anyway, Carrie yeah. says hi too. She's she's making Hello. something for Cinco de Mayo. Um, by oh, the nice. way, also everyone also loved you and John Adams, the C word, love actually. Yeah. I mean, if you had to pick one of your favorite roles, Laura, I know this is probably like picking your favorite recipe, which for you is impossible, but what was sort of the most fulfilling role you ever had? Well, I, they're different ones for different reasons. Um, I think Marianne Singleton, of course, for Tales of the City is, is really close to my heart. Uh, Abigail Adams is uh, Clara Kinsey uh, for Kinsey with, oh, with yeah. Liam. Um, you know, the savages, I love, I, I, you know, it, it's hard for me to choose. I, I, I love it? them, you know. The, cru the Crucible, you were so all. awesome in The Crucible. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, not even to thinking about the theater stuff. I mean, the theater stuff is, um, you know, you know, I, I've, I've been very, very lucky that, you know, nine out of 10 experiences have been really wonderful. And I love the people who I get to work with. And I always learn something. And sometimes it's hard and difficult, but it's, it's always worth it in the end. And, um, you know, I love Love Actually. And I love the, even the, the sort of uh, learning a lot about voiceover stuff with the, some of the smaller documentary jobs I've done. And, yeah. um, you know, all of that stuff. We were all saying it's before, just all fun. before we could get you on, on, um, we were having trouble connecting. We were all talking about oh, masterpiece, masterpiece oh, theater, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. every time I watch Downton Abbey, I'm lately like, Oh, there's Laura. <laughs> there I am. Hello. Saying hello and welcome. I know. <laughs> exactly. I know. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm so happy. Uh, wait, uh, oh, someone asked about something with Ozark. I'm not going to actually ask a question about Ozark for people. Um, who haven't seen it, but are there any, are, uh, someone asked for your favorite moment from Ozark or if there's a funny story. Oh, the big C, not the C word. I'm sorry. Yeah. I called it that's the C okay. word. It was the big C. Oh, it's all right. So sorry. That was not that's the a first time that's show, happened. Everybody. Not to worry about it. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Thank you uh, person for, for telling me that. I love that show too. Although it was so near and dear to my heart, but just God, your performance in that was so incredible but someone asked for any oh, funny uh funny stories from the set of ozark any funny thing that happened you know it's it's all of it it's really just sort of the joy that happens there amongst the people i just i, I you know i love our crew i i love the people who i get to work with and they're funny my dresser is a woman named emily kramer and she's one of the funniest people i've ever met i just she's a breath of fresh air every single day and and there are people like that in every single department of that show. So it is, you know, it's just a joy. It's just a joy to go to work. Because that's an intense show. So I'm glad that you guys were able to blow off steam. Oh, yeah. When you're oh, yeah. We have fun. And, oh. you know, it's, it's when you're with people year after year after year, you, you get more comfortable with each other. And it's just it, it's all easier. And when the work, when the writing is good, it's easy to do. It's hard and, and difficult when it's just not a good experience. That's when it's hard. By the way, a lot of people are reminding uh, you of You Can Count On Me. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. They love to. One of the Mark. best. Yeah. That was with, with, with Mark. Mark Ruffalo, right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, you know, he's my brother for life. You, you know, And the savages and all, you know, all of them. I'm, I've been very, very lucky, particularly with the people who I've gotten to work with, particularly yeah. with Mark Ruffalo and and Phil Hoffman and Liam and Richard Gere and, you know, people who I truly love, who I, you know, didn't just enjoy working with, but, you know, feel they've added so much to my life and our friendships mean a great deal to me. Uh, well, I'm sure they would say the same about you. Well, I'm so happy to catch up with you, Laura. I don't know why. Same Carrie, here. Why you, Carrie, why did you say Caitlin Flanagan? Are you friends with Caitlin Flanagan? I don't know. Am I? I might I be. I don't know. She just, I don't know. She just texted me. She, she texted me in the middle of this. I thought, Carrie, is there a reason you did that? Did you t text me Caitlin Flanagan for a reason? <laughs> a different thing oh, altogether. altogether. There's always, a fear, oh, there's always and, a fear I'll hurt someone's feelings if I don't and, know who and, they are. People are also saying primal fear. I mean, there's so many oh, yeah. roles. I mean, my God. Anyway, okay. well, Laura, I'm going to let you go so you can keep reading your cookbooks, hopefully make something Thank from you. them. And um, but yep. if anybody wants to watch this, we're going to post it in my newsletter, Wake Up Call, tomorrow morning. If you haven't subscribed, Laura, to my newsletter, you have to. Oh, no, I, I already started... get it. Oh, good. I already get it. I started my own company. There. Someone just said, who is Katie Couric? What the hell are you doing here if you don't know people? But um, right. it's. I started my own company a couple years ago, and we're having so right. much fun and good. working really hard on a lot of different projects. So thank you. Our motto for our newsletter is open it, even if you don't read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So Do open it. it, Laura. Anyway, give Bennett Crack my love open, and your cute husband. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic bye, to see you. Thanks for having great me on. Great to see you. Bye. Okay, bye, Laura. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.